This is the essence of the cell under study. You may notice a grave problem here for electronics is that the device is basically not connected to anything. That happens to be the strength of the device. It's perched on the edge of craziness, and that's its design strength. Now, you have to remember that digital circuits are made of transistors, and the only reason they operate digitally is because they're slammed to the rails from zero to five volts. You don't have to operate them that way. You can operate them in analog fashion. So if you get as little as 0.7 volts on them, which is what you need to overcome a diode voltage drop, you can get this thing to work perfectly well in the analog range, no problem. And it's CMOS, which means that in principle it has zero power requirements, so almost any voltage will provide the necessary current. All right, let's talk about your crystal radio. I'm sure you have one at home. The crystal radio was our, our 1920 internet, when an inventor discovered on his workbench that you could take a wire and stick it on a piece of germanium and create a diode, our first non-linear device. And then later in 1922, somebody discovered that you could do it with uh, silicon, and that worked out a little bit better. It was patented, the government made sure that everybody knew about it. The essence of the crystal radio, a couple interesting things. This is known as a half-wave rectifier, power supply circuit, uh, by the way, and people use them in urban settings to charge their batteries because they can pull off so much voltage off the air. The diode is created from it. Basically, you can get a diode wherever you have a dissimilar metal or a dissimilar junction. That's why radios can pop up within your teeth from your fillings. All right, so we have a movie that we're going to play for you about crystal radios. Okay, you're seeing a setup of a crystal radio. The crystal radio is being monitored by a voltmeter, which is showing approximately in the range of 600 millivolts, six tenths of a volt, of average AC voltage coming off of the rectifier. And this is, of course, being shown on the oscilloscope as well. I have in my hand a switch controllable amplifier. So you can hear that it's actually a radio there. Now you hear two channels. Because the front end, that is to say the tuned circuit, the coil and the capacitor, those two components by themselves don't have high quality, high enough selectivity to block out just one station. So we get the strongest station uh, superimposed on uh, something next to it. The point is, though, that this is a substantial amount of voltage that is coming off of a standard crystal radio. The amplifier here is battery operated, so you could hear uh, from the speaker. Otherwise, you'd be able to hear right from a small headphone. Now, I can measure you right now in this room, and I happen to know from experience, if we put one end of the voltmeter in the plug and you held the other, there'd be about 18 volts on you. So, Dr. Tiller was wrong. UEDs cannot be disabled simply by switching power off. I assert that the magical unpowered UED is simply a very complex CMOS crystal radio. Now, there is a TTL oscillator out here. Switching power off will stop the clock, but there's a crystal in there. There's a nice little sliver of real crystal in there, so that's just going to strengthen our theory because that has enough piezoelectric properties to gather up the voltage that we need in itself.